Okie doke. Let's go. Um, yeah, I may jump. This is going to be a ramble meander even before I start. I know that. Due to the fact I'm also listening to some brand new music, so I may have to, um, like I'm taking, I'm trusting a bit, mm, a bit little off right now. We'll see how it goes. Okay. Although I'm going to say lots of stuff has happened pretty darn quick, a lot quicker than I expected. It doesn't mean we're ready to go. Like when Charles Satora uh, commented going, oh, do you think you'd be ready in four and a half months? I'm not sure if he was being uh, sarcastic or whatever, but uh, maybe not because he knows how long uh, things are taking me to do. Um, I can remember way back when... Um, commenting on um, Ard Wolf's, um, uh, I think it was the counter clipping show, and I, I mentioned, uh, I said, hey, you know, I've calculated it'll probably take me about ten and a half years to complete, you know, to 1918 based on the uh, on the way I'm going, and people chuckled, and I was like, well, <laughs> here we go, okay. So why I said it's going a lot quicker than I expected, I've, I'm pretty, I'm pretty, I'm, yeah, I'm going to go with it. Uh, I think I know the exact amount of supply points, uh, army headquarters, corps headquarters, artillery, artillery brigade, uh, brigades, um, engineering regiments, uh, replacement units, um, elite infantry divisions, regular infantry divisions, reserve infantry divisions, uh, infantry brigades, Opal Cheney Brigade, so you now know what I'm, who I'm talking about. And is that it? I think so. Okay, just on a side note, remember that I've been doing a hell of a lot of background work for this for over a year. I knew full well that I was going to get to this point and I had to start doing stuff. Like I said, I've been stripping off the Caucasus army and I wish I could show you a closer up uh, view. Like I've said before, I've got super high res images of the entire area here. I can do some amazing things um, like the just the blank with nothing on it, no, none of the counters and after that it's like I can do um, amazing things. It's 200 megabytes so it's it's pretty good. So I can like put in the Gorlitza uh, turn of uh, front and you know we could see the difference and so on and so forth. I just think it's awesome. Okay that being said here we go. So how uh, I'll tell you how I did the infantry divisions at one point I'm like Holy smokes, does this ever make sense? I'm really happy I did it that way. So, uh, to go a long story short, I went through the grand campaign uh, schedule thing, the reinforcement stuff, um, uh, this, that, and the other thing, and I ended up, there, were some, there are some discrepancies between the modules and the grand campaign, uh, uh, the reinforcement schedules, and so on and so forth. So I called it the big adjustment. And like I've said before, and I'm doing a monster narrative, it's not funny, you, uh, well, I, it's just I'm doing lots of things, man. Um, there's gonna, there's the December truce where all the forces are taking a, a break and deciding, okay, how, what are we gonna do? Are we gonna try to like um, go for peace, keep going? What, what are we gonna do here? Jockey for position, whatever. And like I've said before in previous videos, if you think I'm going to just like everybody's going to like, you know, start uh, singing uh, some 60s tunes, no, it ain't going to happen. Um, we're going to war and the Russians, for, I so wished, wished, wished they could have, I could have figured out some kind of plausible reason why they could have um, had a separate peace with Germany. It just ain't going to happen. Uh, there's just too much good going on for them and they're still somewhat, for me anyways, committed to uh, trying to help out the other side of the Allies. That being said, they've got a secret little chit chat going on with um, Romania and the Ottoman Empire called the, the Black Sea Alliance and they're going to try and figure out a way of uh, nailing Bulgaria. Sorry, Clark Commando 1983, I've mentioned that before. Um, shit, i got to roll for that actually again. I, I said I'd roll for that each month. Um, well, to find out if, you know, uh, people's intrigues can find out things that are going on. That being said, let's get into the, and then I'll try to show you how I figured out um, how many, um, how many infantry divisions, basically, the Russians have. And I, um, I'm really shocked. I didn't expect that, that bit to go quick. Um, I'm doing some other... Um, 
Cole's notes or shortcuts or whatever. And it doesn't matter. Like, you may be like, hey, what the hell are you doing? Um, I'm playing this game out and I'm playing it out my way and I want to learn things and I'm still going to learn things. They're just going to be maybe at, uh, look, this is going to almost going to be like a potential Western Front type stuff. We're getting to a point right now where everybody's going to be entrenched and if I looked at the initial strength uh, supply points for either side on this in January 1915, it's not very nice. So what I decided to do, first off I tried, was to go with the Gorlitza Tarnath Breakthrough uh, supply points. The problem is the Russians are orders of magnitude uh, worse off than the, well, especially the Germans, compared to the Austro-Hungarians. And I was like, okay, that ain't happening. I want people to still be on an equal footing-ish because I want to learn things. And one thing I want to learn is going to be trench warfare. And I'm not going to be doing trench warfare at this specificity on the other uh, conflict zones. Perhaps, well, probably the, um, uh, uh, the Arabian one, but uh, that's still, you know, it's I don't know if we're ever going to get into um, uh, entrenchments the way this is. So I decided not to go with the Gorlitsa uh, Tarnif uh, supply point uh, things. I ended up going more or less with uh, the initial supply points that everybody had at the beginning of the war. Remember, I'm playing things out. I'm trying to learn things. It's got nothing to do with uh, this bit. It's like, whatever, those are quibbles, which means, so here we go. Um, I'm going to tell you what's going on, and like I said later on, I'll figure, uh, I'll explain to you hopefully um, how I figured out how many infantry divisions are available. Uh, it makes sense to me. I'll go take a look later on on how um, the Grand Campaign rules uh, deal with it. But I'm happy with the way I'm going, and I think I'm going to use this template as I go forward with the other um, uh, forces. And I'm starting to start seeing what I would love to have for this game. You have no effing clue is a universal currency. This thing is missing a universal currency. There's some way there's I, I need oh, I need a credit. I need the universal credit. I need things to be converted so quickly. It's not funny uh, that then I can uh, start. Uh, things can happen a lot faster rather than starting to micromanage. There's other ways to do the micromanaging, as far as I'm concerned. So anyways, I know it's going to sound horrifyingly high, but it isn't really in the long run, trust me, because everybody's entrenched practically. So please remember that. Um, so the Russians, starting January 1915, are going to have 280 supply points to uh, divide amongst 10 army HQs. There's going to be an 11th one coming in at the end of January, and I would prefer to have another one. So the instant I can start constructing, which is going to be January 1st, 1915, I'm starting to construct a uh, army headquarters. We're also four core HQs short. Um, I need, I would like to have two per, I'm um, doing a triangular approach, if you want to call it, the triangle com, uh, command and control per army. Um, so I would have one army HQ, kind of a little bit better than the other two uh, core HQs, but not by much. Um, I'm missing four HQs, uh, core HQs. I've got 16 replacement units, so I'm going to put in, you know, obviously for some reserve. Um, I've got 11 artillery brigades at, um, well, it doesn't matter, don't worry about the strength points. We'll deal with that for the infantry. So I've got six engineering regiments. Um, the Russians used to have two. I now have... Um, I also have four elite uh, cavalry divisions, which means um, they have two st uh, strength points instead of one, which is unusual for the Russians. And then I have 12 cavalry divisions at uh, just uh, the one strength point. I then have 22 Opolcheni, or the People's uh, Militia Brigades. Um, they can only uh, be used for, in my world, only used for counterattacks. So they have a bracket around their strength points, and it's a 1-4. Uh, the four being a uh, movement point. I've got 10 armies, I've got them written down. Um, Paul uh, von Rennenkamp, the first army dude over here, it, I'm keeping him, and I'm keeping him in the first army in the same ge geographical location because he's used to that spot. Uh, the same as Nikolai um, uh, 
Proto Popov, he stays in Second, uh, second Army. Uh, third Army is Anatoly Rosenschild. Fourth Army, Ant, um, Anton von Salza. Um, fifth Army is Pleve, I do believe. Uh, yep, Paul uh, von Pleve. A new dude, brand new. Sixth Army is going to be uh, Dmitry uh, Nadyazonji or something. But uh, a lot of people in here end up becoming part of the Red Army later on. I was like, whoa, it's trippy. Uh, the Seventh Army is my boss's. Um, well, maybe I shouldn't say that because he's a real person then. It's going to be Ivan Karpov. You're going to see why, like, what the hell is he doing behind lines? You'll, you'll, I'll tell you in a minute. Uh, Eighth Army, Alexei uh, Brusilov. Ninth Army, uh, Plant, uh, Platon uh, uh, Lechitsky. And uh, Tenth Army, um, which is ironic because that's where the Tenth Army HQ um, uh, were surrounded and surrendered uh, to the Germans in um, October, I do believe. Uh, Vladimir Olikov. Now, I'll tell you about the infantry units in a bit, but I'm going to show you the command and control here. I'm still, this is early, super early days. I'm looking at this as the sector commander, uh, Yuri Danilov, trying to figure out what the hell we want to do. The main strategy, I would say, for the, or the overlying theme for the Russians would be um, attack and support with armies. So you will never find um, uh, two offensives going adjacent to each other. Um, if there's going to be offensives, uh, they have to have at least a support army beside them, preferably two. That's the way I want to do it, because if things go bad, well, then at least I've got someone to help out. As well as I don't have a effing clue what the Germans are gonna are, are trying to do. Okay, so there we go. One of my major monster. So like I said, attack is where I'm putting the army HQs. Where and doesn't mean I want you to get there in five minutes. Uh, it's these are overarching strategic type um, f for this conflict zone, the Eastern Europe conflict zone. Trying to figure out what we want to do. We really would love to get Memo. So I'm going to uh, entrust it with the 7th Army. Unfortunately, the 7th Army's got a lot, to, a lot of work to do. It's just I'm, I'm too short. Like I said, this is early days. I'm an army short. This guy here is my 13th Army. Uh, you're like, wait a minute. Shouldn't you have 11 and 12? I'm going to put them somewhere else. But I was just like, lucky number 13. We're going to go with that. Um, so there we go. Um, the 7th Army, Ivan Karpov, is... Uh, reinforcement station is from Riga. He's got three things to do. Uh, the northern um, coastal defense, uh, as well as construct this rail line uh, to connect this bits here and attack Mammal. That's insane. But we'll see how, uh, see how I can do. Uh, First Army, like I said, massive geographical area. This is ridiculous. Support. Uh, uh, 13th Army, yet again, support. I've got this monster amount. It's just too, it's too much. Second Army, support again. I just don't want to start attacking uh, here yet. We'll see what happens. I want to get Wooj back. I want to get Wooj back. I want to get Wooj back like you have no effing clue. Let's get Wooj back. So I'm going to give it a shot. So there's the 10th Army. But then you're thinking, wait a minute. Aren't you doing a second uh, thing here with no support? Yeah, you're right. But at least he's got one bit. I'm just trying to see if I can cross the army. We'll see what happens. Uh, the 6th Army yet again. Um, it's going to be support. Uh, Ninth Army, support. Uh, Fifth Army, um, we're going to try to t uh, take this little, uh, this, this road juncture here. Uh, Eighth Army as well, and the Third Army is going to try to support both. I know I'm not, it doesn't sound like I'm completely following my rules. Like I said, these are early days. I'll have to go and take a look. I also put on uh, the railheads for everybody and fortresses for the Russians. So there we go. You can kind of see this place is called uh, Strija, uh, something like this, but uh, it's been around for a long time. I think that uh, the town literally means stream or the word stream it gets, it word, uh, gets its word from the, the river there, the, the river Stri. I think that's how you pronounce it, maybe. Anyway, so that's that. I'll tell you how I got the infantry, how many, how I figured out how many infantry units I got on the board. I'm going to have to look at my book because I was like absolutely shocked. So what I did was this. I realized that the, as far as I remember, the, um, the highest strength infantry unit for the Russians is five. 
I went okie doke. So I'm going to make the elite infantry units five. I'm going to make the uh, regular infantry units four and reserves three. I then went into my book and took a look at, um, I just counted the number of strength points in total. Then I went and counted the amount of instances I saw what I consider elite um, infantry units. So grenadiers, uh, the first, you know, the guards, infantry, Siberians, I don't know if they, it doesn't matter. It's just, I'm going with it. So then I counted those up. I ended up at 12 and I was like, well, let's do it, or sorry, eight. And I was like, let's do a nice round number. So I said, and I still wanted to have like the first few divisions called like, or be elite. So I said the first 12 plus those eight. So that's 20 divisions are going to be elite. The Russians can never do any more. Those are five fours. That's it. End of. And I'm not getting into this game, uh, the game of mix and match. Uh, I can just every five seconds move strength points from, uh, oh, you're going to hop. No, no, no. You get them from replacement units and so on and so forth, but none of this nonsense of, no, no. You want, no, no, no. Then I uh, added up the number of uh, reserve infantry units that I had on the table. And I found a ratio, and then I you know, counted then the other ones. And I found a ratio, and I was like, okay. So it ended up coming down to, and I said, that seems fairly plausible. So for every fourth infantry division, it must be a reserve infantry division. So every time I created them, I had to make sure that every fourth one was. Then I, yet again, so, and the, these numbers are at max strength. If I want to, for example, make a regular infantry division, if I like, I'm like, oh my God, I've got 80, for example, these guys, uh, the Russians have 1,700, 1,700 kilometer long front, 87 hexes or something crazy. Um, it is, that's a lot of counters and you may end up being paper thin. So I may end up having to, you know, make, make some infantry uh, divisions not at full strength so I can get more body on the board, if you want to call it that. That being said, I still have to remember that rule of every fourth one has to be a reserve infantry division. So if I just start going mental, splitting up infantry divisions to make more of them, regular ones. It's like, well, wait a minute there. You still have to do one every four. So here we go. I'll give you the numbers. It's pretty sweet. Uh, after everything is said and done, like I said, I went through all the, um, all the artillery brigades and so on and so forth. So I end up with 20 elite infantry divisions, like I said. And um, then I also end up with 55 regular infantry divisions. These are available January 1915. I get to pop them anywhere I want. And 29 reserve infantry divisions. And I also get three infantry brigades, which are at 2-4 uh, strength, and 22 Opal Cheney, or the People's uh, Militia Brigade. That's not too bad. Um, so there we go. I'm going to start now trying to, uh, trying to look at the terrain and start partitioning and seeing where I want to go. Um, and plop my people down and also have to remind myself that in many places here the Russians are in a better position for a line of supply than the Germans are and that's just the way it is. Uh, another thing I'm trying to remind myself though is scale back my objectives. Scale them back. This is like I'm learning man. This is it's overwhelming amount of uh, amount of supply points that are going to be needed and strength points and so on and so forth. I'll give you the other um, quickly. I'll give you the other strength points if I have them listed here. I, mean, I, pop them here. I don't know where I popped them. Hold on. Um, so the Russians are going like I said are going to get 280 supply points to partition amongst 10 army HQs and 20 core HQs. I haven't done the Germans or Austro or Hungarians, but now I've got a good template to go forward. Um, oh boy, oh boy. And then I, like I said, I have to start looking at um, how to start producing things and so on and so forth. And I'll see if I can try to scale that back down a bit. Oh, there's other little micro whatevers of trying to like accelerate things. It's like, okay, what, what, um, anyways, I'm not going to go down that road. The Germans are going to have 170 
and the Austro-Hungarians will have 140. So they've got overall more than the Russians, which makes you know sense and so on and so forth. But I'm just going to say this, a few other things is that, I don't know if I talked about it in the last video. Remember, uh, the Germans are going to give these guys, uh, yeah, I did, the Germans are going to give that all up, uh, or give them to the Austro-Hungarians. The Austro-Hungarians didn't, didn't want to play ball, so now they take it up. I'm still going to give it a bit of grief between these two. Um, I think they're not going to want to share as much. Um, I will say this though. The, uh, the Germans are going to really, really, really try because their supply line of supply is just god awful. It's way the hell back here. Um, so what we're going to try to do is really see if we can ask or prod or do something or I have to give something sweet and ask the um, Austro-Hungarians if we can, you know, use this uh, this rail all the way up to here and start um, supplying our troops this way because we want to make a push and uh, really, you know, well, we want to take uh, Kielce and, and move up to uh, Radom for sure and secure uh, Wuj. Huh. Oh. oh yeah, I'm in heaven line, man. Like you have no heaven clue. All right. I think this is a good one. And the music wasn't too bad. All right, see what happens. I'll go take a look. And yeah, I hope you're having fun. See ya, man.